Today on Rappler. China will establish a congress in Sansha, its new city in the disputed South China Sea. A suicide bomb attack in Damascus kills the defense minister of Syria. And hopes dim for the approval of the reproductive health bill. Hello, I'm Maria Ressa. Welcome to Rappler, your social news network. China will establish a legislative body in Sansha, the new prefectural-level city that includes areas claimed by the Philippines in the South China Sea. The Chinese province of Hainan approved a motion Tuesday to prepare for Sancha's First People's Congress. This comes even with protests from the Philippines over the establishment of Sancha City itself. The planned Congress, along with the proposed Sancha military unit, aims to bolster China's claim over the disputed areas of the South China Sea. Sancha, which China established in June, administers the three disputed island groups of Nansha, or Spratly Islands, Shisha, or Paracel Islands, and Zongsha, or Macclesfield Bank. The Philippines also has a municipality that covers the Spratlys, Kalayaan, which is under Palawan. International law expert Suzes Suarez says establishing a government in a territory is a means to prove ownership. Filipino workers trying to flee the unrest in Syria have to pay up to $10,000 to their employers before they can leave. Foreign Affairs spokesperson Raul Hernandez says Syrian employers are demanding refunds for the deployment costs of Philippine staff. More than 1,800 Filipinos were sent home from Syria, but the Philippines is still processing papers for more than 1,000. The Philippines ordered a mandatory evacuation of, the nation, of its nationals in December, some 10 months after an uprising against Syrian President Bashar al-Assad broke out. A suicide bomb attack on the National Security Headquarters in Damascus kills Syrian Defense Minister General Daoud Raja. Raja was the Defense Minister, Deputy Army Chief, and Deputy Head of the Council of Ministers, and a key Assad ally. Also killed was his deputy and Syrian President Bashar al-Assad's brother-in-law, Asaf Shaukat. State television says the attack in the city's central Rauda district targets the regime's most senior security chiefs. The bombing came as battle between regime forces and the Free Syrian Army raged in Damascus for the fourth consecutive day. Human Rights Watch calls on the Philippine government to address threats against environmental advocates now that it has issued a new mining policy. In a statement, the group cites three cases since October 2011 where critics of mining and energy projects in the country were killed. Margarito Cabal, an organizer of a group opposing a hydroelectric dam in Bukidnon province. San Fernando Village Chief Jimmy Liguyon, who refused to sign an agreement needed for a mining investment. And anti-mining advocate Father Fausto Tentorio. Human Rights Watch Deputy Asia Director Elaine Pearson says President Benigno Aquino III encourages mining investments in the country but has done little to stop attacks on environmental advocates. On July 2, Aquino signed Executive Order 79 which aims to institutionalize mining reforms. Advocates of the Reproductive Health Bill face a tough time getting the bill approved in the House of Representatives. There's only a one-month window to pass the bill in August before Congress prioritizes the 2013 budget deliberations in September. The RH bill is pending on second reading in both the Senate and the House plenary. House Majority Floor Leader Neptali Gonzalez II says the bill's chances of getting approved are very slim. Uh, the House of Representatives, uh, um, I, I, ang sinasabi ko lang talagang uh, medyo tumilihid na ang um, uh, kumbaga na uh, yung, yung butas na pagtataanan ng, uh, ng, 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 ng RH considering that uh, realistically we are hanggang, hanggang December na lang kami. But RH bill proponent Albay Representative Edsa Lagman says time is not a problem if there's political will to push for it. He says Congress has always found time to fast track the approval of measures which the leadership favors. 
short of dismissing the proposal, Malacanang says a coalition between the Liberal Party and the United Nationalist Alliance would be difficult because of practical and philosophical reasons. LP has already forged a coalition with Senator Manuel Villar's Nacionalista Party and then Dinko Huanco's Nationalist People's Coalition. Presidential spokesperson Edwin Lacerda says LP has, in his words, philosophical differences with some members of UNA senatorial slate, which includes allies of former President Gloria Arroyo. Lacerda adds, UNA has already declared that it will only accept candidates who belong to the two parties that form their coalition. House Majority Leader and LP member Neptali Gonzalez II says the LP, NP, NPC coalition is already a winning ticket. There's a gag rule on Senator Miriam Santiago, and she's imposing it herself. The decision came after an online backlash to this statement she made. After I was voted by millions of Filipinos to deserve a secure term, I tell my enemies, stop molesting me, you mongoloids. <laughs> Advocates say the word mongoloid is hurtful to persons with disabilities, PWDs, and urged the senator to apologize. In response, Santiago wrote the Down Syndrome Association of the Philippines to say if there was any public ridicule and vilification, I certainly did not aim it at any person with disability but at corrupt politicians. The senator did not apologize but promises not to use the term again in the future. Well, let's now look at Rappler's Rap for today, a list of the 10 most important events around the world you shouldn't miss. At number two, the CEO of the company tasked to provide security for the 2012 London Olympics admits security for this month's games are, in his words, in humiliating shambles. Security company G4S can't provide the security guards needed for the games. The company, though, won't waive its 57 million pound management fee, even though it can't guarantee that all 7,000 security guards will show up when the Olympics opens on, June, on July 27th. At number seven, Republican presidential nominee Mitt Romney insists he will not release previous tax returns, saying it would just give President Barack Obama's camp more information to, quote, distort and lie about. Romney says the hundreds of pages of tax records he has already released is more than enough. Romney also criticized Obama's camp, saying they are looking for, quote, anything they can use to distract from the failure of the president to reignite our economy. And at number 10, Microsoft unveils Office 2013. The upcoming version of this, of their popular productivity suite, will be fully touch-ready, meaning Word, Excel, Outlook, and PowerPoint will respond to touch-based controls like swiping, pinch-to-zoom, and tapping. Office 2013 also comes with a cloud-based storage integration via SkyDrive. Microsoft CEO Steve Ballmer calls the product update their most ambitious release ever. For the full top 10, visit Rappler.com's The Wrap. The Department of Health says two children who tested positive for human enterovirus have recovered. Both were among at least seven children investigated by the DOH for symptoms of hand, foot, and mouth disease. The DOH clarifies this is not similar to enterovirus 71 that has killed more than 60 children in Cambodia. International disease experts warn enterovirus 71 may replace the polio virus as a public health concern. A U.S. health expert says there may be an end in sight for the AIDS pandemic. U.S. National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases Director Anthony Fauci says it is possible to end the, end the pandemic even without a cure. Some 34 million people around the world have the human immunodeficiency virus, which has killed 25 million since it first emerged in the 1980s. Fauci says antiretroviral drugs have made the deadly disease a manageable condition. On Monday, the U.S. Food and Drug Administration approved the first pill for HIV prevention, Truvada. The New York Knicks confirmed they will not match Houston's offer for Jeremy Lin, allowing the hugely popular point guard to leave for the Rockets. The team had previously vowed to match any offer Lin received. On Twitter, Lin says he is extremely excited and honored to be a Houston Rocket again. He inked a $25 million offer with the Rockets, but the Knicks had the option of matching it until midnight Tuesday. 
The Rockets' offer includes a $14.9 million scheduled payment for the third year, which would have cost the Knicks a hefty sum in luxury tax penalties on excessive salaries. Top mixed martial arts fighters are coming to Manila on August 31 for the biggest MMA event in the history of the Philippines, Pride of a Nation. Among the fighters scheduled to take part are former Dream Lightweight Champion Shinya Aoki and former UFC Heavyweight Champion Andre Arlovsky. The fighters say they're excited to compete in the Philippines. We put excited to fight on August 31st, like always. And what do you think of the Philippines so far? So far it's so hot and so humid. But I'm very excited and I was surprised a lot of people asking about pictures, you know, it's kind of cool. At, at the end, next to every story on Rappler, you see fight on a August mood sir. meter. There are eight emotions there. You click how you feel, and then all those votes are aggregated in our mood navigator, which you see here. Uh, last week, around this time, the mood navigator was sad following the death of Dolphy. But as we've moved on from Sunday, there have been more and more green circles. Um, cop sack, this one, cop sack for obstructing a Kino convoy, 54% happy. This article, This Ability, 10 Life Lessons Pompeii Disease Taught Me by Atwang Magdaraog, uh, is 84% inspired. That added to the circles, two more circles from yesterday, making the mood navigator mood today, most people are happy. Well, that's Rappler's newscast for today, Wednesday, July 18, 2012. Visit Rappler.com and watch our newscast Monday to Friday. Tell us how you feel on our mood meter. I'm Maria Ressa. As we say at Rappler, tomorrow begins today.